Today we've got the Ryobi 40 volt HP Whisper Series all-wheel drive self-propelled mower. Now let's just dive right into it, talk about the features, and then we'll actually use this. You're going to be really impressed on what we do with it. Stick around. This is the brand new Ryobi 40 volt HP 21 inch self-propelled Whisper Series mower. Now this is an all-wheel drive mower, so we get drive wheels in the back, which is typical on self-propelled units, but we also get drive wheels on the front as well on this. It is part of their new Whisper Series. Now, I'll give you a little hint. If you see anything from Ryobi in their OPE lineup or their outdoor power equipment, and you see the Whisper Series on there, that's the top of the line of their equipment. So that's gonna be the quietest and most powerful tools or everything with the Whisper Series on it. And you'll see that on the mowers like this, as well as even like the string trimmers and blowers as well. So you'll see a lot of those things, but when you see the Whisper Series, that's gonna be the top of the line units. So here we have the 40 volt, which runs on two different batteries. Now it doesn't run on two batteries at the same time. It actually run, has two battery ports that are both live, uh, but it runs on one battery at a time on their 40 volt platform. You get LED lights here on the front so we can mow at night. People ask me all the time, who wants to mow at night? When you live in Florida and it's 100 degrees all day long, then you find a way to mow during the dusk or even into the evening. So those are very well used. Uh, in those places where people absolutely understand the need to mow at night, or at least the desire to mow at night. And you can do it now with the LEDs here on the Ryobi mower. Now, before I turn this thing upside down and so we can take a look at the bottom, I want to point out one of the things I really like about Ryobi's mowers is this folding handle. It's so easy to use. You just flip that switch, lay it down, it clicks into place, and now I can pick this mower up. Same thing when I want to stand it back up. Just flip the switch right here and it stands right back into place. And you have two different notches that you can choose from for setting that handle. But just so easy to fold that over, lock it into place, and now I can stand it up for storage, or in this case, stand it up so we can look at the underneath of this mower. Now we can see right away that we have a dual blade system, as well as we can see the drive motors here on the back. So here's the back wheels, and there's the drive motor with the live axle. And up here is the drive motor for the front and the live axle across there. So that's going to be when you have it in all-wheel drive mode, which you have a switch to switch that out. We'll show you here in a moment. Uh, then it will call on these front wheels, or you can leave it in just rear-wheel drive. And these front wheels don't drive or don't, don't pull. Just the rear wheels will do the self-propelling. So you have a switch where you can operate that in and out of the all-wheel drive mode. So I wanted to get a good measurement of these blades, and when we measure the blades, we're right at 21 inches across the blade. I'm glad to see that. And a lot of times when they say a 21 inch cut or a 21 inch deck, then they're literally meaning the deck, and that's not the case on this. We get a true 21 inch cut from the Ryobi blade, because from blade to the blade tip, we're at 21 inches. So the actual outside dimensions are about 23 and a quarter on this deck. Now this deck is a composite deck, but I'm seeing some beefing up, if you will, uh, from previous models that I've seen, because in some previous models, when the deck got hot, say on a hot day, it seemed to twist a little bit and we'd get marks in here from the blade actually contacting that. But I'm seeing some ribbing here, which should give us some additional rigidity in this deck. And by the way, the deck is warrantied for a lifetime. The mower has a, has a five-year warranty on the mower itself, but the deck has a lifetime warranty on that. Now, right here's an interesting piece. So right here, a lot of times you would see a mulching plug because it's actually a rear discharge when you have the bagger set up. And you can also do a side discharge as well. We'll go over that in a moment. We'll also go over this, and this is a kind of a unique option on, uh, on Ryobi's mowers that make it very easy to switch from mulching to actually bagging. Something else unique on the Ryobi mower is you'll see here the made in the USA with global components. So this mower is actually made in South Carolina at one of Ryobi's new facilities and they're intending on increasing that production at that South Carolina facility as well as that grows to do more of this. So are there some global components in this? Absolutely. So some stuff coming from overseas, but as far as the build and a lot of the manufacturing is happening right here in the USA. So we say anything that's happening more here on our side of the sea, then we're all for it. So glad to see that made in the USA sticker there. Now we'll see right away, we have larger wheels in the back 
and they are rubber coated and they're 10 and three quarter inch wheels. So I think they call them 11s, but that's 10 and three quarter inches. Uh, so we get a hard impact resistant plastic, but up here is kind of a rubber over molding. I think it's still a plastic, but it has that rubber feel to it, uh, but nice and solid. The wheels are solid on there, almost 11 inch in the back. And then on the front, uh, right at eight inches or seven and three quarter inches. So I believe they call those eight. So eights and 11s, eights on the front and 11s on the back. Now here on the opposite side, we'll see the side discharge here. So that's not gonna be active, if you will. It's got a, a spring-loaded flap. So that's gonna keep things closed while you're mulching and while you're bagging. So if you're mulching and bagging, that stays closed. We don't have to worry about it. So if we want a side discharge, all we do is take the side discharge chute. We lift this up and uh, these two things here will slip into those uh, little units right there. So the kind of a tongue and groove type of system and that's locked into place. So that's not going anywhere. Very easy to just slide that in, lock it into place, and now that's in there. It's not going to go anywhere until we lift this back up and then we can just slide it out. This is also our height adjustment and we can do this with one hand and it's gonna lift the whole mower up and down. We don't have to go to all four wheels. We don't have to do two of them. Uh, just one piece here and I can easily do this with one hand. So I can put it all the way down and uh, we get a cut height of about an inch. And if we go all the way up to number seven, gonna get a cut height of about four inches, a little more than four inches, because obviously that blade is recessed up in there a little bit. So looking at one to a four inch cut and uh, in uh, seven different increments between that. Now, just as we were talking about the ease of changing to the side discharge, the same thing with bagging and not bagging and mulching. And that is, if we want to bag, all we have to do is lift this up and then we have this that just sits right in there and then we're done. So basically you have two little hooks right here, have these two plastic hooks, they line up with these two metal pins right here. So very easy. Lift this up, set it into place, and now we're good to go. Now you may notice when I lift this up, this is access to the inside deck and we see something blocking that. Well, we have a switch right up here. You can see the little green thing sticking up. We'll get a better shot of this here in a moment. And I can just take this, open that up, and now you can see that we're ready to bag. So we don't have a mulching plot. So we don't have a mulching plug. We don't have to shove anything in there. It's just that door right there that's operated with this handle up here. So open, ready for bagging, closed, and now it's gonna mulch. So you can even leave your bag on there and still do mulching if you have this in the right slot. So here's where our mulching plug happens. You see the mulching door. And so we lift up on this ring, slide it over, and let it lock back into place. And then to close it or go back to mulching, lift up this ring here, slide it over and let it lock into place. Here's the battery door, no lock or anything, just uh, reach here, grab the lip, lift it up, it is spring loaded so it's gonna come back closed. Uh, it runs two of the six amp hour batteries right now, but any of the 40 volts this will use and it will run on one battery or two batteries. Actually, it only runs on one battery, but you can have two in it or you can have one in it. You see the directional arrow of the key that tells us which battery it's using. So right now it's using this battery. And as we use this and it dies, then we just pick this up, turn it around, put it back down. And now we can start on this battery. We also don't have to lift this up to get a reading on the batteries because we have a gauge right here that when we turn the unit on, Now that tells us, that gives us a gauge of what that battery life is right there. So we can see this actually discharge as we're using the mower and we'll know when it's time to flip the battery. And you'll know that because it'll actually stop and then you can just flip this up, turn your key around and keep mowing. And if you wanted to, you could pull one battery out, go ahead and put it on the charge if you want to. So we have several things going on up here at the handle or up here where we put our hands. Uh, first thing is the handle release. We were showing how easy this is. Very easy to flip this up and, uh, and fold this forward if we need to. And by the way, it works in either direction as well. So when you flop it all the way down or fold it forward, then you can pull it that way. So really easy to fold that handle as well as the change of position of that handle also. 
So you see there's the low position and there's the high position. We also have right here is the all wheel drive switch. So on the left is gonna be rear wheel drive and there's a marking here. And on the right is going to be all wheel drive. So that's gonna tell you all the wheels are going to be driving. And on the left, it's just going to be driving with the rear wheels. This is our safety lever. So this has to be pulled in for both the mower to actually roll forward as well as for the blades to be engaged. Now, if we want the blades to be engaged with the handle pulled in, we hold down this button here. And anytime we want to stop the mower, we just let go of that safety handle. It's going to both cut the blade as well as the self-propelled. Do you see? I can push down the lever here, which is actually engaged with the self-propelled. It's not going anywhere. But if I pull this, now the mower is actually going to want to roll forward. So again, if we want to stop the mower from doing anything, we let go of the safety lever. And now the mower is, has lost all its ability to really do anything under power. Now, in addition to the all wheel drive switch, uh, we also have some options here for actually propelling the mower. And that is we have a max speed selector. So where we can actually slide this to the max or slide it over to the minimum or somewhere in between. So depending on whether you have long legs, short legs, like to walk fast, like to walk slow, you can set that speed to where you want it as well as for this throttle. So in other words, this is what's going to activate the self-propelled. So you have to take your thumbs and push this down or your palms or however you want to do that. Now you may like different positions on how you hold your hand. We have a little lever right here and you can pull this and put it all the way down here if you want to, or you can kind of push it with your thumb, or you can pick it up and put it all the way up here to where now you may just want to, you know, put your, uh, the pads, your uh, palms on there to hold that down. So you have some options on where you want to put that lever so that you can activate it in a comfortable position. And here's a better shot of that all wheel drive button there to where on the right hand side, you can see all wheel drive. It's an all wheel drive mode. And then if you push it to the left, it's going to be in rear wheel drive mode. And neither one of those are going to operate until you push down on this. And by the way, you can mow without pushing that down and just push this mower around. The only thing is you're actually pushing against the motors on it. Uh, so you actually hear the motor kind of whine as you're pushing it. So it's not so easy to do as just like a freewheeling uh, mower. So I'm going to put the bag on it first. And we'll run this with the bagger. Now you can definitely hear this when it hits thick grass, it wants to speed up. Hasn't done it yet. Now it is very quiet. I'm sure you're picking some of this up on the mic, but it's still a very quiet machine. You'll hear me get off in the thick stuff and it want to speed up. Then once I get in the thinner stuff, it calms back down, back in the thick. Now I've only mowed a few strips here, but you'll see, pull the bagger off and we've got nothing in there because we left it in the mulch mode. So let's take it out of mulching and put the bag back in. And now let's see what we get. There's the speed up again. Speed up again right here. I'm at about half speed on the uh, on the propulsion. Here we go, Max. Pick it up a little bit. One thing I noticed in Max speed is we're leaving some of these stragglers of, and this is just a 
This is a product of Bahia grass, and you get these seedlings that are really tough to cut. They really are, whether you're riding a zero-turn rider uh, or a push mower, and so you'll see it'll cut the tops off to kind of leave these. But I notice if I just turn the speed down just a little bit on the self-propelled, it will cut those no problem at all. I'll go back to about half speed. And you see now it took care of them. And I'll hit these for the first time. So you see no problem taking care of those. Just going too fast across those, it does leave a few scragglers, but you slow down just a bit and it will take care of them. Now let's take our bagger off after we had the mulching spout in the right place. And you see just after a few strips, we're, cut, we're catching the majority of those grass clippings. Okay, now let's uh, use the side discharge. Turn it back to mulching. And now even though we have our mulching door closed, now we've got the side discharge open. It, it still should discharge out the side of the mower. Okay, now let's see just uh, how much power we get from the Ryobi 40 volt HP. And I'm going to put it in all wheel drive. I have to be honest, I did not think it was going to have this much power. So here's my thoughts on the mower. Starting with the positives. This thing's got plenty of power. In fact, very impressive power. We didn't think we'd be able to run over the stuff we did and it keep cutting in. It really never acted like that it was bogging down at all. Now we'll tell you, and this goes with any battery powered mower, at least every one that we've ever reviewed, and that's quite a few, is that when you start running off and stuff like that and it does govern up the motor and make, you know, make it run as hard as it can, pushing the power limits, it's going to discharge batteries. It's going to go through those batteries much quicker than if you're just kind of cruising out in the lawn in a manicured lawn. That totally makes sense. That's going to happen. So no marks against that. Plenty of power, it's going to cut this. As far as the mulching, it does a great job with that. As far as the side discharge, it does a great job with that. On the mulching door, this is a great idea and it works good. However, we did notice that once you get some grass in there, there's a little track it rides on it will fill that track up with grass and so you kind of got to move it back and forth to clean that out and then it slides very easily and we've noticed that the wetter that is the the more that happens but just something for you to know many of you are going to leave it in the bagging or leave it in the mulching side and you're not going to worry about it you're just going to let it eat which is typically what you're going to do and what we're going to do but in obviously in testing this we wanted to actually use it and go back and forth so just know that, that if you use this and, uh, and the bagging and the, or the door is closed or the door is open and you need to slide it, it's going to slide on a track and that grass can get in there and just kind of, you know, clot it up, if you will. But if you just kind of move it back and forth, it'll clean that out. Or you can take the batteries out, lift it up and, and clean that little groove out to do it that way. 
Another thing is it doesn't go quite fast enough in the propulsion mode or in the self-propelled mode. Uh, I'm 6'2", long legs, so I typically walk faster than most people. It just doesn't go as fast as I want it to. Is it a comfortable pace? Sure. Will it get the job done? Absolutely. But if you're looking for something that just moves really, really fast in the self-propelled mode, this lacks a little bit there. So it lacks in a little bit of speed. The all-wheel drive mode works great. We use this in a, in a uh, retainage ditch or a retainage pond and just some real uneven uh, uh, surface or run uh, real uneven sod, so all, all kinds of undulations in there. Still did a great job of just one-handed operation at kind of climbing up and being able to go up those hills even in this thicker grass back here, it did a great job in the all-wheel drive mode, just kind of rolls itself along and does a great job of doing it. So the all-wheel drive works good. Then the other thing is the actual adjustable throttle back here. It's, it feels a little bit flimsy. So I, I don't know how else to explain that. Did we break anything? No, but it just feels like it's got, lacks a little bit of rigidity. And I'm sure it may have something to do with the, the adjustability in it where you can actually adjust it. But we did notice that it just doesn't have a good solid feel on that. But other than that, this thing did really, really well. And then one more thing, there's these inside wheel coverings here. This really amounts to nothing other than they just you know, kind of flop around a little bit. Now, all they are is just a covering. They don't really do anything else. And we've looked at it and there's nothing wrong with them. They just seem to move around a little bit and could probably have some sort of bracing that would help that kind of retain its place better. But again, had no malfunctions on it. Just something we noticed by taking a close look at the mower while we were using it, after we were using it and so forth. Now, as far as runtime goes, uh, we actually use this. They claim, I think, a 70 minute runtime as well as a three quarters of an acre, or I think they say up to three quarters of an acre. We actually measured it out. Uh, we measured out, you know, three quarters of an acre and then we lacked a little bit, but what we cut was 27,000 plus square feet. Now an acre is 43,000 square feet. So if you divide that, if you take the 27,000, divided by the 43,000, that's gonna give you the amount that was cut. So we cut five eighths of an acre. What's that? That's dead in between half and three quarters. So did we get three quarters? No. Did we get more than a half? Yes, we did. And over an hour of runtime, right at over an hour of runtime on it. We didn't mark that exactly, uh, but we do like to kind of mark out to give you a good idea of how much uh, cutting you can do with this. And I would say that's kind of mediocre. That's a uh, that's Bahia grass here in Florida. It's hard to cut, although it's not really thick right now. We haven't had a lot of rain. So again, I, I would say that's right kind of in the middle of the of duty, if you will. It's not heavy duty, it's not light duty work. It's kind of right, right there in the middle. A good, I would say that would be a, a good test. And we got, like I said, five eighths of an acre in. It's very easy to swap the batteries back and forth. In fact, you don't have to swap the batteries, just pull the key out, flip that around and, and put it to the other battery and keep mowing. So we like that. Um, so it does a decent job at runtime. I would say a, a good job at runtime. And then as far as price goes, price on this is $7.99. So that's not a small number. We're talking 800 bucks. At the same time, if you're needing something like an all-wheel drive mower, well, you've really closed in uh, your box as to what mowers you have to offer. When you start looking at all-wheel drive mowers, those prices definitely go up there. And if you look at the fact that you're never buying gas, which that used to not mean much when you're buying a gallon at a time, but now when a gallon costs you five bucks plus, that means a little something, but you're never putting oil in it either. Uh, you're gonna sharp, sharpen blades and, re and replace blades. That's not going to change. I would say the, the same amount of maintenance as far as blades, you can expect to do the same with that, but there are no belts, there are no pulleys. Uh, as I mentioned, gas and oil, uh, spark plugs, anything like that, you're not gonna have to worry about as well as if you want to stand this thing up, put it in a closet, put it in your garage, you're never going to smell that gasoline smell. You don't have to worry about that. Pull the batteries out, throw them on the charger, you're good to go the next time. Again, 800 bucks, not a small pill to swallow, but I think it's in range for an all-wheel drive mower, and there's mowers that are more expensive than that. As well as this thing has got a ton of power. In fact, much more power than the previous even 40 volt HP mower that we reviewed before. So kudos to Ryobi for, uh, for bringing out that much more power and giving us all wheel drive as well. Now you can also get this in a two wheel drive and the Whisper series, very quiet machine. We're kind of blown away of how quiet they're able to make these mowers and blowers and string trimmers, but there's a lot of engineering going on in there to make these as quiet as they are. 
Warranty wise, the mower itself is warrantied for five years. Uh, you heard the deck is warrantied for a lifetime and the batteries are also warrantied for three years. So you're guaranteed three years use out of a battery. So if you're worried about how long the batteries are gonna last, uh, that's gonna last you about three years. And by the way, that's $7.99 comes with two of the six amp hour batteries. I believe you can buy it in a kit or a, in, a, in a bare tool form without the batteries, but I'd highly recommend you buy it with the batteries. And then as you grow in your different lawn care equipment, you can buy the Ryobi bare tools and you've got the batteries to power those. Hey, be sure to check it out. It's the Ryobi RY401210 and it's the 40 volt HP 21 inch self-propelled Whisper Series brushless self-propelled all wheel drive mower check it out for yourself at home depot or home depot.com we'll have a link in the description also keep track of us on instagram facebook and twitter if you don't mind would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already and by all means if you hated our video well then give us a thumbs down but would you let us know in the comments why have a great day keep smiling